Hi guys, another one of my dimly lit uh, video edits here. Hope you don't mind. It seems like it's uh, the new um, whatever, the new fashion that I've defined in video making. Lo-fi chic. I don't know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Um, well, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, about a week ago, I had sort of mistakenly this like I I've been last couple of days I've been thinking about some things that are mishisms, and if I ever do have a lasting legacy, I think there's definitely going to be a couple mishisms. Um, one or two might be positive at best. I think the the other two or three might be quite. Um, let's just say humorous, if not negative. But um, yeah, like a week ago, I had lumped in NT Wright with this sort of um, group of people that I thought um, were against uh, scripture or like against the gospel in some way or like like here's the Mishism part that I kind of like I don't even know these famous people you know that everyone talks about like Dawkins or whatever like I just I kind of know their names and stuff but I just I never like I know about them more like through inference or whatever like I just never remember the details about stuff it's just like i don't need to know it like i just don't even bother getting into it you know it's like i don't really even care about them <laughs> but i mean that is kind of the mishism because it's like hey they are important right of course they're real people they're important and like the the whole thing is is that like i'm bad on the details sometimes like i'm just hopelessly bad on the details well anyway um like, I think there's a couple of these, um, I mean, I can, it, it takes me a while, you know, like I can think about who I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about, but it takes me a while. I'm not as, I'm not very quick on that stuff. So there's a couple of these, um, scholars that, whose names I'm from, familiar with a little bit, but basically I see them as the sort of group of detractors to the gospel and stuff like um, or to the scriptures or, or to theology or whatever and I sort of th like you know maybe it's like his name or whatever I just lumped him in with that like a week ago and then like now like watching like a few of his lectures I'm like okay oh my gosh you know, it's like, where did this guy fall from? It's like, what? what is the problem? It's like, he's a very sort of um, soft-spoken, very, very intellectual. Everything he says is like positive. Everything he says is apologetic. It's, it's just like, he, he's just such... A brilliant speaker. Everything he says just illuminates the gospel in the best way. It's just like he does not say a wrong word. It's just like you couldn't listen to this guy for more than five minutes and call yourself an unbeliever. <laughs> like literally, it's just like everything he says totally redeems scripture, totally redeems the gospel. It's just like... The only, like within like a week and a few lectures, it's like the only thing bad about this guy is that he's so right on. That maybe he's a little humdrum and boring to some people. Certainly not to me. Like he should be like as f famous, like he should be seated at the like left hand of Christ, of Peter's, let's say at the right or whoever else, you know. It's like, I mean like, my goodness, I like I'm just sitting there going, where's the catch? Because I know my research. I know I am just like, where is the catch? 
I'm waiting for it. Like, drop the hammer now. Tell me, like, he's got, like, some doctrine that is just, like, whoa. And it's, like, break my heart now, please. Break my heart. Because I'm so smitten with this guy. It's, like, he just, you know, mentioned, like, C.S. Lewis. Or, rather, C.S. Lewis was mentioned to him. It's, like, yes, yes, definitely the heir. It's, like, you're thinking John Lennox is the next C.S. Lewis? No, no. There's something... Like, I'm sure, like, already John Lennox, John Lennox was, like, this guy, like, for a while, and then John Lennox, there's something about it that I was just, and I, like, now I'm not sure, and so I'm holding, yeah, I could say John Lennox, but I'm, like, I'm, like, no, like, right now, it's, like, not even close, it's, like, like, it just amazes me. How could there be one person where there's so much, like, good doctrine and teaching and, like, every single thing, you know? It's just, like, it just leaves you that know a little better. That you're, like, I don't know. There's there's always something, you know? Like, or there's, like, some sort of, like, misconduct in their life. Or whatever because they're too good but it's like (laughs) too good it's like every single word he says is bang on it's just like man it's like like i don't really want to toot my own horn but i mean he kind of says like every single thing i think and i'm like Kind of like it seems like I'm always fighting with the church and I'm always fighting with the unbelievers and I'm always fighting with everyone to just, you know, it's like all I'm always fighting like and just to make like, you know, like one point at a time out of like a thousand points that I have. And it's just like, okay, so I got to tell you this again, like or like I got to pull I got to take you by the hand on this one point. It's like it kind of gives me satisfaction Every time I do a video or make a con- like a uh, a meme on one point of like this whole entourage of points that I'm like so hopelessly far from, it's like you know, like why do I have to like just totally get people to like just change their whole mindset so much that I like I'm like already used to it. And I'm, like, glad when I kind of, like, win one step each day. You know, now that I'm, I feel like I'm gaining a, a bit of ground. I'm making progress. Like, I'm I'm gaining territory in the battle these days. So I'm kind of encouraged, and yet I'm, like, only getting, like, one hit a day. So he's just coming in here, and it's just, like, just dropping hits, like, drops of nectar off his speech like every single sentence it's just like it reminds me of reading the bible like every i mean especially the new testament like every single sentence is just like he's just totally um it it's just truth you know it's like it makes you feel good it just redeems the gospel it just glorifies god it just it's just like such a beacon of light. Praise God, oh my soul. So, um, what I'm saying though is not necessarily that I'm so far behind. It's just that I am so far behind that I almost get duped into believing that I don't think this good. And I do think this good. Like this is exactly how I think. And it's like, why am I so alone? Well, I'm not alone. Because... Because N.T. Ray is exactly how I think. The difference is he's, you know, Oxford bred and, uh, you know, we're just getting to the real punchline. So just hang on here. You know, he's like, like I have my, I have my glimmers of, of um, sage, sageness or whatever. But then it's just like the the whole awkwardness and and the whole sort of like yeah just my whole approach is kind of like really clumsy in a lot of ways but like i think it comes from the heart you know and that resonates with a lot but then like i like i i've got like a kind of eloquence 
but that I don't it yeah you just don't really call it eloquence you know it's just doesn't like it doesn't land that way and um so it's like he's got that he has got that but it's like I'm saying it's like checking all the boxes boom 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 like within like a week ago I thought he like I said he was one of the detractors you know he was one of those scholars the handful of scholars that I know that kind of have a distinct foothold in scripture or in biblical theo- like or in theology uh, and they are just really down uh, you know they're casting down the faith or whatever like that and so like how did I not hear of this guy before like I'm serious and not only that but he def like no one has come close to reminding me of who C.S. Lewis was like this since so much so that again the comparison comes up like C.S. Lewis man like there was nobody like that and it's only years later where I see a couple of his doctrines and even this like N.T. Wright points out a couple he doesn't he says I don't agree with everything he said and that's right like I pretty much was so smitten with C.S. Lewis that you could never and and not his his um like his literature but his theological work um that you know you just don't take people like for me like once you're you're in legendary status you just don't really fall for me it's like i know you're there you're always there you know so it's like but like i kind of overlooked c.s lewis for a while because like it's like that's the whole thing when someone is that good and feckless flawless or whatever it's just like their only bad is they can sort of fade out of your picture because they don't ruffle any feathers or push any buttons. They're just actually one of those. So let's leave that for the very the le- dot 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 for the last word of this brief little monologue or whatever you call it. Um, so like he, needless to say, he brings C.S. Lewis's memory alive and well and afresh to me because he's a reminder that c.s lewis was such a powerful force like my goodness like like i said in hindsight like when you know someone for so long and you learn other things then it does change it like it's not like he fell from my opinion at all but it's just like you forget how good he is or was or whatever and this is how that how he is so it's like though it's like it again it's like everything he uplifts the memory of c.s lewis in my mind he meets he uh champions the rival of c.s lewis like it's like now there's another c.s lewis the, the story just gets better and better and better within like just minutes and days of knowing of the guy it's just like wow wow so like checking all the boxes just boom 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 and so to the point where i'm like so what is the problem like either what is the problem or why isn't this guy so famous then knowing one of those two things either it's just a matter of time till you hear the real dope like for like when i first heard of Ravi Zacharias I was really smitten not heard of him when I first listened to him I was really smitten of him and then I I got to know him a little better and I I think that like my my romance kind of wore off a little bit that's all I'll I'll say it just like I sort of saw some of the things he was saying and I didn't know if I necessarily felt like that strongly as my initial romance was um so i'm not really making a comparison there because the comparison is different i was not totally smitten with zacharias and i still am smitten with zacharias but i was never totally smitten with him anyway whereas this guy it's like i said i'm so smitten that it's either like i'm just waiting tell me just bring a bad story in you know like that or 
like I said, he's so good that he almost is a little bit boring. I mean, he's not to me, but there's maybe something to be said about people that are like that, that it's kind of like almost a great tragedy that they just fade into the woodwork because they so don't really have any contradictions and sorry to say but even the best of us as humans we need a little bit of dirty laundry like just a little bit like gosh dang it I'm so used to dirty laundry that I need just a little bit just to help me remember him so I mean I'm I'm grasping at straws like where's the catch because like I said for the third or fourth time already ticking all the boxes and then boom what is it not a bad thing like just like another he's a he's a the guy's a bishop well duh like okay if anyone's gonna be a bishop this is the guy let me tell you this is the guy to be the bishop so like you're like okay what like you're saying that there's a problem here it's like no it's so much like not it's like this guy even redeems being a bishop because like bishops are always supposed to be wrong just by virtue of being a bishop it's like man you know there's going to be issues if they're the bishop you know there's going to be contradictions if they're the bishop come on i mean that's like a politician like so not only does he take in all the boxes but this guy is like you could not have more true of a bishop than this guy like this guy like how is this guy not so famous that like he's just like way way more well known than the, than like the greatest pope of the last 100 or 200 years you know it's just like i don't get it because his he's just so on the ball um and so you know here we come to the end i just want to say it's like like this this guy is a saint man like this is a saint and i'm just you know like i'm you know all i can say is it's kind of tragic because he is an intellectual okay there's no denying it and uh man people i'm just telling you it's like the way to god is through the intellect like that's the ticket man because I think what happens is when we come, like, you know, that that is maybe the problem there. Okay? What I'm, like, see, that serves us. But what I'm telling you is don't belittle that. Because we, you know, I, I think I've, I'm on to something. We serve God per, perhaps arguably a lot more when what? when we are all into god or all about god through our emotions that's when we are not just on fire that's when our fire it either scorches the world with harsh power or like it just like it engulfs the world into a blazing torrent of redemption that just burns off everything except the pure presence of god and you know almost like burns off the whole flesh like it just the power is like you know the the very consuming fire of god that is almost like so good that it's bad like that's how intense when we come to god emotionally when we when we are on board with god in that emotional phase but here's here's what i know so well and oh lord i pray thee don't let me become lukewarm you know because uh and i'm not faulting him i'm just you know i'm like praising god for him and i'm just like glorifying god or in god for him because man there is no problem there is no contradiction what what i'm saying is is that when you come to god on that emotional plane then i think what happens is is that you burn out or you go to the pendulum seems to always go too far eventually you just either that 
Like, like, oh yeah, and this is the one thing I was going to say. Like, why is he not facing severe persecution? That, that was the weird thing about C.S. Lewis, too. Like, how did this guy live the life? He, he was respected. Like, that is the real mind-boggling thing. And, like, that's how this guy is. And I look at his audience. Just a, I just one brief view. And it looks like very intelligent people. Like, men and women of all ages. But I just happened to notice it was, a, like, quite a older audience. But very intelligent and peaceful looking people, you know. There's something, to, I don't know, like what does like attract like here? Because I was almost worried when they were going to pan to the audience if I saw all these young, savvy, kind of like, I don't know, almost like people like witty people or something. I don't know. But it just seemed like very sincere and just like very real people. And it's like, praise God, like, this is not an interview, and this is not an audience. This is a real church congregation, praise God. Like, this is, like, nice to see, man. It just, like, touches my soul. It's just, like, just in intellectual good people, right? But what I'm saying is, is that when you come back to God, <laughs> and you're not ready for that, emotional roller coaster and you come through the intellect man that is the right door in my opinion you have come to god through the right door because you realize you realize god is doing it all and you are just a lucky actor in the game and intellectually you're peaceful you're grounded like you just like you're just ticking all the boxes. It's like you're not even really trying to do anything. Sorry to say, but you're not because you know. You come to God through the no ledge. <laughs> and it's like end of story. It's like when you come to God through the knowledge, you're there. Like, man, you just got to listen to this guy like... I don't want to be one of those guys saying you got to listen to this guy, you know, but it's just like he's so much like, again, I don't want to toot my horn, but he just like he says everything that I'm about. And so it's just like, yes, yeah, so refreshing because it's like this is like my friend. OK, <laughs> like this is the guy I can talk to. It's like everyone else. Like I said, it goes back to like everyone else. It's like I think you're my friend, but like I think. There's a victory when I clear up that one point out of your whole attitude. And like I'm, you know, like I feel like I'm in the same boat with you, but I I yeah, like I don't like I feel like I'm in the same boat, but what's really happening is more like I feel like I'm like God in a cloud and I like I like your boat, but I'm like there's a whole bunch of things that I think I got to touch up on. And if I just touch up on one, then I feel great. And like we're equal and I'm in your boat. Well, no, that is not like I'm just so used to doing that day in, day out that it's like I think I got a few straggler friends in those boats. And it's like they're not my friends. This is my friend. This is like this guy is talking my talk exactly. Like it's just like. And he, he's saying it so effortlessly. And and not only that, but like, man, he can speak. Like, he, he just spouts it out and just everything. He is just put, like, how, it just seems ironic that a week ago I thought he was a detractor. And I'm now I'm like, how is he not... Um, so the word I'm, I'm coming to, or did I already say it, is like, this is like a saint, you know? And that the thing that I, I think I did say that then, and I was going to leave that for the last word, but the thing is, like, what I just don't get is why he's not persecuted and stuff. And, like, that is how C.S. Lewis was. But praise God, it's like, I think there's hope, you know. There is, you have this profoundly godly man, but I think sometimes, like, it's not, like, when I'm talking about the intellectual life, it's like, man, it works good for you. And, uh, <clears throat> your relationship with God, but I also think that it gives you 
a better reception, which makes your life perhaps a little bit more manageable as, you know, like, you don't have a bad rap as a believer that's ruffling all these feathers. And then you don't have, like, this sort of, like, intense um, rivalry that, like, Jesus and stuff... You know, like where people want to crucify you and persecute you endlessly. So I think that, like, again, the danger is somehow that it's too stayed. You know, it's not, <clears throat> it serves him more and it blesses him, but it doesn't necessarily, I, th- I don't know how it doesn't bear fruit though either. So that's kind of catching me too. But I'm saying it's like there's something different. Like when you got like a Simon Peter like an impetuous man who's just such a rock of the church there's something different about his spirit he's not an intellectual that was the brilliance about peter you know and and i think god builds the on the church on that rock like you know and what happened to peter he was crucified upside down right like just just massacred just butchered you know so how how do these guys, you know, and it's like, again, I'm saying like maybe the only f- fault then is that they're so on it. But being that intellectual, it profits them in the comfort of this life. And then they almost like can can reach the end and not really even feel anything anymore, you know. But I mean, he like that's not like a worry. He's just saying how he just loves the fact that he's always learning more. And I'm like, yes, yes, you are. This is what it's all about, man. This is. But I am just re- leaving a bit of room to say, you know, there are some kind of like it's something in my mind or soul that is just like finds it unsettling, and it's like I think that there is that somehow it's just when something's that good it's it doesn't really get much recognition or it doesn't like really get much it doesn't get any positive or negative recognition in a way or uh no fireworks posit- on the positive or negative end but because it's it's of that intellectual framework then it doesn't maybe there is just something that it doesn't really kind of do or whatever it just doesn't like it it's somehow it's too calm and peaceable or something i don't know but like like i don't see any problems with it and so I'm I'm so driven to find the problems. It's like the demon on my back is just like, what is it? Where's the loophole? Where's the catch? What is it? There's no, you know, there's it's never like that. But with C.S. Lewis, man, there was nothing. But I think there was a pride of spirit in C.S. Lewis. There was, um, there was a there is a couple co- internal contradictions. I think like C.S. Lewis did this. Um, this speech that basically he totally went like I'm a lifelong pacifist to the absolute whereas C.S. Lewis did one that kind of condoned uh, war or, or like fighting and like I had to take it with a grain of salt because I'm like okay well if C.S. Lewis does that if anyone else did it no but if C.S. Lewis does that then it's like I'm on board with it but it's like I'm on board with it where I'm saying like I could go to battle if my country called me I'm not that type of person I'm not that complex like I'm a team player that's what people don't get about me I'm not the guy that's gonna like you think I'm gonna snap and I'm gonna be like the guy that's like the uh the next whatever you know the the um next serial murder like dude you so misunderstand me man like it's like i'm so much more solid than that it's like all my family and friends it's like they've trained me how to be a team player man it's not like the kind of team player you think it's a kind of like i get 
under the scene i get into situations like when things happen i get in there why because i know you get so much wisdom by being a man of the people my gosh i would be nothing like that's what makes me great is that i've learn so and just you know asterisks that were great for sure because i don't just drop that what i'm saying is like i have learned so it's not about me learning for my own greed i have learned so much everything good or all the true wisdom in my life has come by immersing myself as as becoming a man of into a man in in the people and it comes with a little bit of resistance because I am not really that way. Like for some people, it's like they got to be with people. Otherwise, they're like, ah, you know, not me. No, like I always kind of like I'm happy in solitude and in the intellectual sphere. And I always have to like tear myself out. But I do it so easily because I know that that's where I always grow. That's where I do my growing all the time. And then it's when I come back to the solitude, to the books, to the uh, scholarly pursuits that I find myself in the bliss of that research and, and study and those things that I love so deeply and profoundly or whatever. That's kind of my zone. When I'm with the people... You know, like I just, I'm a little bit of the oddball to say the least. Or sometimes it's like I'm, you know, like I'm the popular guy. One, Like I'm the life of the party, but then I'm shy and I'm like, you know, like I just, like I'm not, I'm never like the most popular guy. Like that, you know, sometimes like I've been there, done that, and it's just like whatever. But like... And just some of the things that I do, like I think especially now, like people are kind of inspired and but like especially in the age that we live in, they are way more quickly to be like, no, 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 you're a little bit too flamboyant. Like they just don't go down my road very far. And it was much better when my flamboyant characteristics were really scooped up by people and they were like, because then I really won a lot of hearts because I'm not that good at much else in terms of socially like i need to kind of like do a little song and dance (laughs) no no pun intended or like literally or like i need to do a little bit of a charade or i need to angle a shtick or like uh you know like the flamboyant part comes through my fashion because i'm i'm like a skinny scrawny guy right and that uh pete that kind of like uh what's the word deters people yeah, I'd hate to I hate to say it, but it took me way too long in life to realize this, man. Being that way, you're just like against the odds. It's like if you're that way, and if you're certain types of people, like certain, then people scoop it up. But it's almost like you need to either be like really assertive, or you need to be kind of like a specialist. You know, like I'm thinking about like the jockey or like. Or someone who's like quite small but really tenacious. Like you need a thing like that. And I'm not those things. Like I'm not, you know, small enough to be a jockey and I'm not tenacious or like I'm not, I don't really have a way with people that some do. Like when I, when I'm in the spotlight, not only am I, have I historically been horrified anytime I am in the direct spotlight. Absolute horror. Absolute horror. Verklempt is like such an understatement that that you you could not even begin to understand. Like, uh, like absolute horror and fuddling just to cope with that. So like very bad. But then, like more commonly, whenever the the spotlight is on me, then I'm always wondering how my words last on people. Like you know, like you see people that have a really eloquent speech then you have like nt Wright that's just like so soft-spoken and so like articulate and so wise and so eloquent all of those things combined that it's just like everything it's just like people are just sitting there all ears just completely at all ears and he just talks and talks no matter how much he talks and talks they're all ears 
you know it's just crazy like how but then you have like eloquent like jordan peterson where he laces it with all kinds of contradictions and ruffles all kinds of feathers and somehow he just sings through it all because he's such a great speaker and he's very very intelligent and he also knows how to command his audience so you have a brilliant brilliant mind and speaker there Uh, like very very unique i think and god bless him because i think he's one of a kind too but um that might ruffle a few feathers to say that too but then you have somebody that just more you know they kind of like just they know how to talk to people like and they're kind of you know it's like johnny depp or something it's like i don't know what it is but like it's just like it doesn't matter what he says it's just like whenever john or, or or even brad pitt you know it's like whenever they're in the room man it's like whatever they say is just gold <laughs> like i don't know what it is you know it's like and and then or you have like robert de niro and you almost need to like go away from those people till that like every time you like they come into the room or like you know metaphorically come into the room it's just like they inspire you about what that vibe of people is like you're like uh i don't know what i was doing in life but basically i just want to be robert de niro right now (laughs) like every time they show up you're just like i don't know it's just like you pretty much like you're just like i forget about my loser life i just basically want (laughs) to i want to be robert de niro right now you know or johnny depp or or whatever it's just like they're way with people right um but i lost myself i went too far off and just you know naming my other idols but um i think the point there i was trying to make was that he is um he's more of an intellectual breed and like I just think that maybe like that comes with a certain territory where that's a fault in a way. Like, sorry to say, but when you are that intellectual, it's not just eloquent anymore. It's like it's somehow a fault or whatever. But I got to end this because I lost like this time I'm just going to give up. Like I keep doing this. I lose my train of thought and then I just have to sit there and pause while I get it back again. And I... And I always get it back, but like right now, it's just like I'm done this topic. It's like sitting here just babbling, but I'm just like, I'm smitten, you know? And it's like, like again, it's like, I don't know, like I'm, I don't know if I can do it. Like, I don't know if I can drop the point. It's like, it's like the guy's a saint, but then it's kind of like all you see in a way, it's like he's like C.S. Lewis, you know? It's like, c.s lewis left with a good reputation praise god so it happens i guess that's the point that that i want to make you know what there was these guys that rewrote the english translation bible but there's other of those historical figures and i'm like the one guy like or let's just say you know was it tyndale i think was um he he was uh he was like burned at the stake or whatever but then, like, another one of the Bible translators, like, it's like they they faced no opposition. Or they did, maybe, you know, they, they faced a bit of opposition, but then they were kind of, like, exonerated or whatever. Like, it, it just kind of dissipated, you know? Or same with, like, Martin Luther. It's like he... he well, no, Martin Luther, he's actually not a good example because he was on the firing line a few times and he just squeaked by. And then he ended up becoming really famous because he stood his ground, which was good. Good move on his part there. He's just like, listen, he's like, it wouldn't even be good if I just like recanted right now, would it? Would it be good? So he's like, I'm not gonna. He's like, I'm not anybody. I'm not a great speaker. I'm not really an important person, but it just wouldn't even be good if I like if i turned my back on my own words right now so i'm not gonna and they're and they're like uh yeah okay (laughs) that's like yeah you're right that's uh, that's a good one like you know like so martin luther is like i don't know man i think he kind of got a bad reputation i've heard a couple really bad things about martin luther but i thought like there was more of an ethos that i that i caught wind of where he was seen as a bad guy but then 
I was like, where's, where's, I don't really see it. But then all of a sudden, just like somebody pointed out something. I was like, are you real? Like you, you're a scholar and you're just saying something so like blatantly derogatory. Like how do you even know? Like that, it, wh- what grounding do you have? It wasn't, it was totally ungrounded. He's just like, he just said like, like something that I was totally shocked at like Martin Luther was like kind of like a really arrogant person or something like that like kind of like really like um but you know at the same time I was kind of surprised that like I think Martin Luther really supported like music in a powerful way and I'm like oh that's kind of like me like there's a side to Martin Luther where I kind of was like inspired by him for a while but then there this kind of comes as a surprise like almost like it's not inspiring because it's like I don't want to hear that like when you're inspiring in that godly way then I don't want to hear you're inspiring in that musical way but he kind of was like he made he made music a part of of the church in a really profound way and I think like man was he like super into music like that's cool like wow that that's that's not really bad that's just like whoa that's and it kind of encourages me because it's like not only is he like totally godly and like zealous but he's actually like really into music and you you realize that those things are not enemies those things are compliments praise god yeah 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 that's where it's at man it's like god is so great and good and all that intense pure godly godliness not only that but then the physical world is actually awesome too. Like all the physical pleasures and stuff are like so awesome and rad. Like all the things that we're obsessed with and consumed with and distract us, we think from God, be, they're so awesome. Like adrenaline junky stuff or like intellectual pursuits and passions like those things are so rad they're not so bad they're they're so rad and yet they seem so diametrically opposed or antagonistic to god and the truth and the gospel in another way but they're not but they are so you kind of have to be cautious about them or very weary or like even you have to completely reject some of them so it's complicated but at the same time, then you realize this amazing thing where it's like, no, like music is so awesome and God is so awesome and it just all makes sense. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it all just makes sense. But you're like, how can I handle all of that goodness in my life? How can I be completely obsessed with music and completely obsessed with God? And it's like, yeah, that's like what you call a good problem. But then, like, how do you get it when you have these, like, literally these guys in history where the one guy was, like, had a good reputation and the, and the other guy was killed? Like, it's just, like, so sad in a way. Like, how does that make any sense, you know? So, anyway, I'm done with this topic for now. Shabbat Shalom and God bless.